Hello, my name is Dick Kapples. This video describes the phone catcher. The phone catcher is a circuit that can catch your cell phone in the act of transmitting. We usually know when our phones are transmitting, but there are times when the phone transmits without us knowing. Cell phones will periodically transmit their location to the network so the network knows where to find them so it can quickly route calls and messages to the phone when it comes in without having to search around for the phone first. If a phone has been tampered with, it might periodically transmit information to persons or companies that are spying on the user. The phone catcher is able to detect cell phone transmissions in all the cell phone bands and light an indicator when the transmission is detected. The indicator stays lit until a reset button is pressed. It's a very simple two transistor circuit that uses cheap, commonly available parts. The input is a loop antenna made of 15 centimeters of copper wire. A pair of transistors forms a latch that latches when there's a sufficient signal picked up by the antenna. The output of the latch drives a light emitting diode, uh, which is powered by a 3 volt battery. By the way, I used a red light emitting diode because red light emitting diodes need a little bit less voltage than the other colors. I figured that would just lengthen the battery life a little bit. A reset button resets the latch and turns off the light emitting diode. The two transistor latch is the heart of the project, heart of the circuit. The transistors, a PNP and an NPN, are wired such that the collector current of one transistor is drawn through the base of the other transistor, thereby turning on the other transistor. Since both transistors are wired this way, they turn each other on and keep each other on until the battery is removed or the base current is removed. R2, the 1K resistor, is there to provide the current necessary for keeping the latch latched. If the resistor wasn't there, uh, it would try to pull this 3 volt battery down to 1.2 volts and perhaps hurt something. I put some 100K resistors, R4 and R5, across the bases and emitters of these transistors because the collector to base leakage currents in these transistors was enough to make them trigger. With the resistors in place, it keeps the base voltage down to something like 3 or 4 millivolts. When these transistors are conducting, Q2 is saturated, and that's enough to draw many tens of milliamps through an LED. I'm using a 5 millimeter LED, and I decided to drive it with 15 milliamps. For the purpose of calculating the value of the resistor used to set the current, I made a simplifying assumption. I said, when Q2 is saturated, there's zero volts between the collector and the emitter. That allows me to say that the entire three volts from the battery is dropped across the LED and the resistor. We know the LED is going to drop about 1.8 volts because that's what the data sheet says. So that leaves us with 8 point, um, 1.2 volts that is dropped across the resistor to cause the current to flow. To find the value of the resistor, we simply divide the voltage across the resistor by the desired current. This calculation is 1.2 volts divided by 0 0.015 amps, or 15 milliamps, and that gave a value of 80 ohms. Well, I used 82 ohms because that's the nearest standard value. The reset button resets the latch and turns off the LED by shorting Q2's base. To review the entire circuit, the cell phone signal is picked up by this loop antenna. It causes the SCRs, not the SCRs, the tra two transistor, it's a si SCR simulator, to latch. That also turns on the red light emitting diode, which draws its power from the three volt battery made of two AA cells. A reset button or a switch holds, uh, resets the circuit by taking away the base drive on Q2. By the way, if you use a single pole single throw switch for S1, when it stays in the reset position, it the transmitter can't come on. Uh, sorry, the indicator can't come on, and the battery sees a maximum drain of about three microamps. 
So that's essentially an on-off switch and reset switch if you, if you care to do it that way. When using the phone catcher, place the phone very close to the catcher's antenna. As you can see, I place my phone right on the antenna. If the phone capture trigger, if your phone catcher is triggered by your phone's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi signals, turn them off. You can learn more about the phone catcher by going to www.projects.caples.org and looking in the RF and communications section. Enjoy your projects. Thank you for watching. I'm Dick Caples. See you next time.